What's up, Fight fans? We are live from Cajamar, Sao Paulo, Brazil, LFA 175. And for you that's with us on our YouTube channel, LFA, we have five fights for you guys, free, no cost at all. Some great fights starting off with the women's bout that is off the hook. I'm Max Suarez with me tonight, the guy that's responsible for one of the most incredible submissions in the history of Legacy Fighting Alliance, Tiago Moises. Good night, Tiago. Good night, Max. Thanks for having me. It's an honor for me being here um, commentating the fights with you, man. I'm very excited. We're back. We're kicking off in Sao Paulo, Brazil. First show in Brazil. It's great to be back. We have five fights for you guys. Make sure that if your friends aren't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make them head over. Click that button. Subscribe to the Legacy Fighting Alliance YouTube channel and make it happen. But let's throw it up to Leonardo Levati and get the show started. This fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the LFA strawweight division. And it's brought to you by Kajamar Fundo. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter is a striker. She stands five feet, five inches tall and weighs in at 114.8 pounds. That's her second professional fight with one win by knockout, representing Team Fafel and fighting out of Koyanya Goyas. Please welcome Alicia Ketley. And standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This fighter is a grappler. She stands five feet six inches tall and weighs in at 115.8 pounds. This is her third professional fight with two wins, all by submission. Represented MSP and RFT and fighting out of Rio de Janeiro. Please welcome Ayesa Bertolso. And the referee in charge of this bout is Fernando Portela. First fight for you guys here on YouTube. Thank you very much for following us on our YouTube channel. I'm Max Suarez, Tiago Moises with me tonight. Just so you know who is who, we have Fabrizia Ketlin, blue corner, 1-0. Ayesa Bertozo, blue red corner, 2-0. Battle of the undefeated, and like my good friend Ron says, tonight someone's O has got to go. Ayesa Bertozo was an amateur MMA champ, world champ twice, and Fabrizio Ketlin, one win and one knockout. Tiago, I mean, we can expect anything from these ladies. You know that the strawweight division is a very strong, fast-paced division. Yes. Uh, looks like we have one more fight that uh, grappler against a striker, so let's see who is going to be able to put the game plan. A little over four minutes, 15 seconds left. Great high kick there by Ketlin. Both women wearing the black tops and the black shorts here in Cajamar, Sao Paulo. After this fight, we have four more. And it's also important to remind you guys that after that, we have three prelims. And then main card exclusively on UFC Fight Pass for you that is watching us from the US. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure you go in and sign in to UFC Fight Pass and watch all the live fights. Main event, we got the light heavyweight belt on the line. We're making history tonight. Bruno Lopez defends this title for the first time in LFA history. All the previous champs have gone straight to the big show. So he's trying to make history tonight after coming back from the Contender Series. But back here. First fight, Brotozo taking the center of the cage. The taller fighter, Tiago, and I mean, that, that there has to be some advantage in that. Yes, but uh, Kathleen, she's managing the distance very well. She's switching stances, and uh, doesn't look like she has just one fight. She looks like a very experienced fighter. She's, she's building up the pace. You can see she's not only controlling the center of the cage, but she's the one that's shooting those shots a little bit more, trying to keep busy. And Kathleen seems more of a a one-shot girl. She's, she's, she's throwing a punch, she's throwing a kick. What, what's the, the best strategy for this? I mean, I, I definitely believe Ayesa is the, the more efficient, fast-paced fighter at the, to this point. Yes, uh, Kathleen, she's uh, fainting a lot, moving, moving a lot of backwards, sideways, and uh, I think Bertos, she's looking for the takedown because that's why she's walking forward and see, she yeah. got it. Bertozo in for that body clamp, takes down Ketlin. 
Bertoza is known for working very well. She's in that half guard position. I don't know what you think about this, Thiago, but in my personal opinion, half guard on top is one of the most efficient positions for ground and pound. You got you got good trunk space, you got good upper body space, and you're you're keeping your opponent with their hips and their backs on the mat in a good way. I agree with you. Like it's very safe because in the full guard. They, they can do arm bars, triangles, and uh, it's easier to get up also. You can punish your opponent, ground and pound, and uh, hold them also, keep them on the ground. One minute and 50 seconds left in this first round. Possible three or five minute rounds. This is a pro fight. Straw weight division, one of the divisions that have been growing in the past years. We've had ch all of our past champs have gone to the big shows, even fighters that weren't champs. Uh, Tabitha Ritchie wasn't a, 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 an LFA strawweight champ and went on to the UFC today fighting the top girls in her division. Piera Rodriguez, Lupi Godinez, and the list just goes on. Um, it's been, the LFA has been one of the biggest feeders, actually the biggest feeder, I gotta correct myself, the biggest feeder to the MMA world of all time. So over 300 fighters had the call up to the UFC, and you're one of them. Yes, and it is impressive how the, the level of the fighters uh, looks like you are in a UFC event, you know, like they are top level fighters. I'm very excited for the fights tonight. It's gonna be some, some fireworks. Exactly, fireworks in the making here tonight, last minute of this first round. It's also important to remind that we didn't, we didn't not only did we take 300 fighters to the UFC last year, but last week in UFC's event, we went 3-0. All three L former LFA alumni that fought in the UFC got their arms raised. So that is very good for Legacy Fighting Alliance. But here in Casamar, Sao Paulo, Bertozzo still on top, still in that half guard. Like we said, Thiago, doesn't look like she wants to get out of there anyway because that's a good, dominant, dangerous position to be in. Looks like Bertozzo uh, found a way to win this fight. Uh, she's looking really good on the ground. And looks like Ketting doesn't know what to what to do, you know, because she has to escape her hips, uh, looks for the underhook, look, go for a single leg and try to b go back up. Yeah, Bertozzo has been a strawweight that a lot of promoters and managers have had their eye on her because of her body type, her experience at such a young age, being two-time IMMAF, which is the Amateur MMA Federation. She was a champ twice, and she has been proving that she deserves the career that she's had until now, 2-0 as a pro. First round is up, Tiago. What can we say about that first round? Who would you give, in your eyes, this first round to? Uh, this first round, I give it to Bertozzo because uh, she was controlling the center of the cage, walking forward, she got to take it down. She uh, good control on the top. And uh, I think she found a way to win. And if she uh, keeps doing this, uh, I think it's gonna be a longer night for Kathleen. So in the eyes of our guest commentator and LFA alumni and RFA alumni, Tiago Moises, Bertozzo is up 1-0. Reminding you guys at home that this is his personal opinion. Doesn't have anything to do with the official judges that are cage side tonight. If this fight goes three rounds, they're the ones that are going to have to write that on the scorecards and make it official. There's our ring girl, Annie, letting us know. Second round is underway. We have five more minutes. We have Fabio Portella in the center of the cage controlling the actions here in this bout that opens up LFA 175. We have been we have been on a roll already this year, but this is our first show in Brazil. So thank you very much for everyone that is following us this evening for LFA 175. Bertozo red tape, Ketlin blue tape. Five more minutes of action for you guys today. You can see that Ketlin is trying to take the center of the cage a little bit more. She was walking back a lot more in this first round. Maybe a warm-up round, Tiago, for her? <laughs> Ketlin, she's doing a lot of feints right now. Uh, you can see, like, she controls the distance really well. Looks like she doesn't want to open up on the strikings um, because she's worried about the takedown. That's what it looks like. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. And she knows how dangerous Bertozzo can be from the top. And Bertozzo showed her dominance on on top in that first round. So that's definitely not somewhere that Ketlin wants to be anymore. But if you were Ketlin's coach, that one minute that she has to recover and come back for the second, what would be your words of wisdom for her? Um, for me, I would tell her, just keep the distance, keep touching, touch, touching her, and uh, keep your distance, you know? Does, doesn't, don't go to the infight, don't go uh, to the 
don't get too close to her, you know, like in and out, in and out. But and that, you, you gotta you gotta attack more. And that kind of seems what she's doing right now. Yes. It's almost like she listened to you. She's keeping that distance, she's moving in and out. She's using a lot of those feints that you talked about in, in, in the initial round. You can see eyes wide open, changing stances, but that was a good check by Bertoso. Yes. I mean, <laughs> those things hurt. Sometimes this kick, even checking, it hurts. Yes. Showing a little bit of that fancy footwork there, Ayesa Bertozo. She trains in Rio de Janeiro with KO Squad that has a very good entourage. Rafael Feijão leading it, Edu Simões, Bia Consoli. I mean, there's just Gabby Fujimoto that's fighting tonight, Michael Piki D, Jonas. B there's just so many names that it's hard to say, but uh, shout out to KO Squad. And, but Fabrizia Ketlin, 1 0, like we said before, knockout power, seems a lot more concentrated as we head into half of the second round. Looks like Bertozzi is looking for the takedown right now. She's walking forward, walking her down. Eagle eyes there for Tiago Moises, a guy that's specialist on the ground, black, high level black belt. You kind of, when you, when you know it, you see it, you know, kind of know what's going to happen. So let's see if we're ex we expect that takedown. That was almost it. That yeah. spinning <laughs> kick kind of opened that takedown. Good inside leg kick by Bertozzo. Two minutes left in the second round. High kick there almost, I think it surprised Bertozzo. Yes. She didn't think that leg could go up that high. A couple more feints from Ketlin. A little push kick there for she, Bertozzo. She gotta, keep, she gotta keep work on that jab. A lot of, lot of hip feints coming feints, from Ketlin. Feint, yeah. High kick there by Bertozzo. Less action, a little bit more study. It's kind of like they warmed up their engines and now that the oil's flowing, they're trying to study each other a little bit more. But Bertozzo is impressing me, Tiago. So young, so calm. It's like she's following the strategy. She's not forcing anything. She's maintaining herself. And look at that. She got hit to the body, and she's calling the pressure all up to Ketlin. A good inside leg kick. One minute and 27 seconds left. Good left hand there by Bertozzo. Do you think the strategy of Ketlin moving, changing bases often is something that she's trying to do to kind of confuse Bertozzo a little bit? Yes, I think so, because uh, when you change your stance a, a lot and uh, keep moving, you know, it's hard for your opponent to get your rhythm, you know? So that's a good thing she needs. Oh, good right kick, high kick. Yep, same hand, same leg. People have been knocking others out. I mean, Leon Edwards did that. He's, he's been doing it well. Charles de Bronx did the same thing to knock out Barry, Dariush. 45 seconds left in the second round. And you can see us in the back there. Hello, everybody at home. Here we are. Bertozo versus Ketlin. First fight of the night. We will have five fights for you guys here on YouTube. This is the first one. After that, four more. We, this is the women's straw weight division. Two undefeated fighters. Someone's O has got to go. And Bertozo finally closes in for that takedown. 25 seconds left to work and get that. That's what she's been wanting this entire round, like Tiago said, closing that distance. Feigning, though, using those jabs to kind of confuse Ketlin. 15 seconds left. Ketlin's showing good takedown defense there. Really good takedown defense. Uh, this was a really close round. You heard the 10-second bell. End of the second round. Bertozo versus Ketlin. Tiago, closer round to judge, right? The first round, Bertozo had that top control on the ground was dominant. Going through these replays now, he got that switch kick. What would you judge in the second round? Was a pretty close round. I think Kathleen did way better than she did on the first one, but uh, I think Bertozzo won this, but again, could be, could go to anyone, but I think her strikers were, uh, did more damage. That's, that's what I think. She looks like a, a stronger fighter. So we can say two rounds to zero for Bertozzo? I think so. Uh, could okay. be one one because this okay. was pretty close, but I agree. I, I very close round. Yeah. yeah, very close round. I agree. If you're at home, let us know what you think about this uh, second round. Who who you would give it to? And it's also important to say that this is in the eyes of Tiago, so it's not official. We have three judges that are cage side and are doing their job very well tonight. The Cab, the Brazilian Athletic Commission, best in the business here in Brazil. Third and final round. Blue tape for Ketlin, red tape for Bertozzo. 
Possible five more minutes to the end of this first bout of the night. LFA 175. First time that LFA lands in Brazil. A lot of action for everybody watching at home, so make sure you stick with us throughout the broadcast. Great interviews, a lot of UFC talent, and great big stars here in the building tonight. Tiago Moises sitting by my side. We'll have Kyle Bojalio also in the uh, uh, English broadcast. We'll have other big names, so stay tuned. Uh, we're going to have very good insight for you guys tonight. Four minutes and 20 seconds left. Now Bertozzo being the aggressor. We can see in this fight who is controlling the cage is having more success. When Bertozzo is walking forward, she's having success. When Kathleen is walking forward, she's having success. Exactly. Very well said, Tiago Moises, high-level black belt, Brazilian. He owns one of the most highlighted submissions of all time, especially here in the LFA. If you're curious about it, look him up. Tiago Moises, he has his helicopter armbar. That was the, one of the sickest submissions I've ever seen in my entire life. Elbow now by Ketlin. I heard that, I heard that crack a little bit. They're <laughs> right in nasty. front of us right now. Bertozzo trying to look for that back take. And Ketlin working very well, even though she's got somebody on her back. Do you see how Ketlin is holding her uh, Bertozzo's legs? That's, uh, that keeps Ketlin's head higher than uh, Bertozzo. That's, that's really important when our, um, in a scramble, who has the head higher probably is going to win. Very, very technical there. Bertozzo, Ketlin defending very well. We saw Fabio Portello there. Our ref letting her know that, that that was almost an illegal elbow for her to watch out. Bertozzo now on top. And just so you guys know, Thiago Moises not only has one of the best submissions I've ever seen, he's also our RFA champ. So these are the credentials of this man. If you don't follow him yet, shame on you. Go follow Thiago Moises on Instagram. Great content, great stuff happening. He is fighting soon, March, right? Yes, March 16 uh, against Brad Riddell. Uh, very excited for this matchup. Uh, very game opponent. It's gonna, it's gonna be fireworks also. <laughs> fireworks, like Tiago said. Couldn't be happier to sit alongside this man here tonight. Halfway through the last round, Bertozzo, when she got cracked with that elbow, Tiago, it seems to me that it, there's a little bit of blood coming out of that nose. Yes. Um, I mean, that was, a, that was a spot on elbow. Yep, there's some blood coming out of Bertozzo's nose due to that elbow. Ketlin was very efficient, but Bertozzo now looking for that top control. Pass guard. Tough position for Ketlin to be in two minutes left in the third round. Looks like Bertozzo is more aggressive now. She's got one minute and 56 seconds left to take this round. I almost did start that car there. It kind of hooked up. Looks like when the referee talked with Ketlin, she got distracted and Bertozzo got the, the sweep. Yep, I agree. She took good advantage, and that shows how experienced she is. Ref talking about that illegal knee that just hit Ketlin. Um, I don't know if she was trying to move her knee forward or if it was intentional, but you can definitely see clearly that blood coming out of Bertozzo's nose and a little cut under her left eye, and she's, she's flexing to the fans, so makes it seem like he's very comfortable in her third pro fight. Let's see if you can take a look at that replay. Fabio Portella, as the experienced judge that he is, immediately stopped the fight, was on top of his game, saw it, called timeout. Bertozzo to the other corner. Ketlin, by the rules, has up to five minutes to rest, take her time. Now, Tiago, I ask you, as a UFC fighter, is it always good to take your time, got those five minutes, take a breather a little bit, you know? Or is it just, let's get it going, I don't want my blood to cool down. Uh, this, this is good for Kathleen because uh, she was in a bad spot right now and she can recover and take, takes away a good moment for uh, Bertozzo. So for Kathleen, this is it's really good. Yeah, we saw in that replay that illegal, that left knee of Bertozzo that caught Kathleen there almost in the back of the head also. Everything underway. Fabio Portella judged that as an unintentional, unintentional shot. Kathleen needs to look for the KO now. One minute and 10 seconds left approximately to the end of this fight. And like Tiago Moise said, Ketlin needs that submission or that knockout in order to win this fight. And this is in our eyes, it's an unofficial decision, but last minute, let's see what Ketlin can take out of her, her hat. 
55 seconds left. Ketlin now controlling the center cage, trying to be more aggressive. Bertozzo slowly walking her backwards. You can see the reach difference there when we see Bertozzo in front of Ketlin. Longer arms, longer torso as well. Fainted that takedown, went up with that left hand. Good body kick there by Bertozzo. Bertozzo hits really hard. Yeah. I mean, she's putting that power into every strike that she's throwing. And again, very amazed on the experience of this young lady. Only 2-0, two, oh, two pro fights. Good head kick there by Bertozzo. 15 seconds left, and the crowd starts picking it up. Last 10 seconds of the last round. Catlin versus Bertozzo. This is the opening bout of LFA 175. And that's a wrap for this opening bout. A lot of respect there between these two young ladies. We can call it a game here for this first fight of the night. Tiago, in your eyes, you had given the first and second round to Bertozzo. Is this a Bertozzo fight, or did Ketlin have any chance with this third round? I think uh, Bertozzo won uh, all the three rounds. But uh, again, uh, round two and round three were, uh, were very close. But I, I, I got Bertozzo winning. Uh, both girls, uh, they have a bright future, 2-0, uh, 1-0. They look like they have, looks like they are experienced fighters. So both, they have a, a bright future. And I think they, they're going to grow a lot inside the LFA cage. Well, if the man Tiago Moises has said that, that's what it is. Two young ladies that left it all inside the cage tonight in the beginning of their careers. Um, what we believe, Ayesa Bertoza moves on to 3-0. Fabrizio Ketlin, unfortunately, has her first pro loss, but that's only going to be official when we have the scorecards in and then we have our announcer uh, let us all know who won. Reminding you guys that we still have four more fights uh, for the early prelims here on YouTube. Then we will have the three last preliminary fights and the main card exclusively on UFC Fight Pass. Make sure you sign in. Ron Kruk, Kyle Bojalio in the English broadcast, myself and Tiago Moises in the Portuguese broadcast, a team full of stars. But now, let's head up to Leonardo Levati for the official decision of this opening bout of LFA 175. After three rounds, we go to the judge scorecards for decision. Judge one, score 29-28, ah, yes, ah. Judge two, scored 29-28, Fabricia. Judge three, scored 30-27 in favor of the winner by a split decision, Ayesa Bertoso. Ayesa Bertoso gets the win here. Split decision, Tiago. Wasn't expecting that. I thought we thought it was a clear three rounds up for Bertozo, but that's why we always say that this is our opinion and the official decision is always with the three judges, especially Cab MMA. And now we head over to the highlight of the man that is sitting next to me, just to make sure you guys know who he is. Pretty awesome fight to start the night. Those girls, they Man, looks like yesterday that <laughs> I was fighting here. That's, if you don't know, that's Tiago Moises in the red shorts, sitting by my side tonight in these first fights here in LFA 175. There's a oh. helicopter armbar, one of the craziest submissions first, I have ever first seen in one my life. The history. First one in the history of MMA. There he is, RFA champ, raising that Brazilian flag. We had Pahumpa there with no right. gray hair. <laughs> Young Pahumpa there. Great times, Tiago, and it's great to have you here. I think it makes total Man, uh, sense. I'm so so thankful for LFA, you know, giving me the platform, uh, the experience to be ready to to perform in the UFC. So those those fighters, they they are they are in their they right path. We'll be back in a second with the second fight of the night. Make sure you guys stick around. A lot more action here for you on YouTube. Let's welcome to the cage the fighting out of the blue corner.
and the opponent in the red court. Strawweight bout. Ayesa Bertoza got her third pro win. Fabrizio Kevin unfortunately got her first loss. Now we head to a flyweight women's fight. Bia Consoli versus Carol Faro. Both fighters undefeated. Again, like my man Ron Crutch says, someone's O has got to go in this fight. Bia Consoli is training partner of Ayesa Bertoza. They train over at KO Squad. Carl Faro, a very tough game opponent. Uh, Bia told us, Tiago, that this is her toughest fight by far in her pro career. And then again, very young, both ladies only doing their third pro fight. We also know that in Brazil, having a lot of amateur fights is not something that really happens. Some of them go straight into pro and never have an amateur uh, career. Uh, Bia and Carol, 2-0, third pro fight. Pretty sure we can expect fireworks because these young ladies are very, very aggressive. Man, I love what LFA, LFA is doing in Brazil, you know, giving opportunity for fighters like this, coming up with fighters. Uh, Bia, she's 2-0, but like she is 12-1 as an amateur. So she has a lot of experience and uh, I, I'm excited for this fight. Perfectly said. Like we said, it's not normal to have a, a, an extensive amateur career, but Bia Consley definitely did at 12-1. As an amateur now, 2-0 as a pro. Carol Foro also 2-0 as a pro. But let's throw it up to Leonardo Lavati, the smooth voice in the cage tonight. It's yours, my man. This fight is scheduled for three five-minute round in the LFA flyweight division. And it's brought to you by Cajamar Prefeitura. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This girl is a kickboxer. She stands five feet, two inches tall and weighs in at 125.8 pounds. With two wins, one by submission, representing our play and fighting out of Guara, Distrito Federal. Please welcome Carol Foro. And standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This fighter is a kickboxer as well. She stands five feet six inches tall and weighs in at 126 pounds with two wins. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, she is Pia Consuli. And the referee in charge of this bout is João Claudio Soares. Juan Claudio Suárez is the man in charge of the action here tonight. Second bout out of five on our early prelims here on YouTube. Now ring girl letting us know the first round is underway. Just so you know who is who. Carol Foro, blue tape. Bia Consley, red tape. Five minutes of action in this first round. Both ladies 2-0. Very good outside leg kick. That was a smack on that shin. That hurts. <laughs> yeah. Coming from a guy like Tiago, if he says it hurts, it probably hurts. Another good outside leg kick. She's aiming for that calf under the knee. And how efficient is that, Tiago? We've seen calf kick evolving a lot inside the MMA world. That affects so much. It affects the nerves in your leg. You can't move your ankle. And I know that the guys over at your gym do that a lot. I think that's the one of the worst uh one of the worst things that you can get hit with, you know, because you can move your legs, hurts a lot. Sometimes you gotta uh, switch stances, but I think 
block the, blocking this kick is very hard. It's better for you to put your leg backwards and make the opponent miss. It's safer. Via Consoli's mom is in the crowd tonight, almost chewing there on all of her fingernails as we speak. I mean, it must be tough to have a mom seeing her, her girl fighting inside a cage like this. And I got to tell you, Via walked in here with a face that I got scared. I mean, she was laser focused, immediately closes the end of that body lock. She's got 33 minutes and 30 seconds to work that takedown. She works very well from the cage, as she just proved me right. She looks for the Dagestan handcuff right now. She has a tight body lock. Looks like she's going to get the back. Look for that takedown. Didn't go as was planned. Flora was able to get back up. She's got that north-south position, has the body lock. Looking for that knee. I mean, that was kind of a sacrifice takedown. Don't know if it was the right position or technique to do. Maybe too much confidence thinking that she can do it. Yes, I think it was the wrong decision. Uh, she, she had the body lock. She could be a little bit more patient. You look for the go to the back. I think it would be safer. Yeah, Carol Foro is a very dangerous opponent, like we've said before. Crisp, clean, aggressive, striking, heavy hands. She knows how to feint. She knows how to cut angles, move side to side. And we can see Consoli trying to use her feints. Feinting that takedown, throwing that jab. Consoli is definitely the taller fighter in this matchup. And she showed how strong she is when she gets to the cage. That size really makes a difference for her. And uh, she, she, she got her like four, four cat free kicks. Really good cat kicks. Let's see if this is going to pay dividends. Constantly closing in that distance, working well from the clinch. We had a couple of knees thrown in there. Now she's got that underhook with that right hand. She showed how good she is with that takedown off the cage. Wasn't too efficient trying to take down off of it, but definitely very efficient on the cage. And I mean, if you're at home, you're watching us right now, this does count as, as, as control. She's yes. got her opponent against the cage. She's controlling, she's imposing her will. I mean, you can see the size difference there when she gets to the cage. But Carol is defending very, very well also. You can Fer see how Consley goes nice. down low. Good takedown by Consley. One minute and 40 seconds left to work from there. Getting that cuff in, trying to take that support away from Ford. She's doing it well. Look at that. Nice. Straight to the mount. Very good place for Consley to be here in the end of this first round. She's very dangerous she from this position. She has 132 work. That's a lot of time. Yeah, people don't understand. Like you say 130, it sounds like very little time, but when you're in there, if you're on the bottom, one looks like two is hours. It's two hours <laughs> that, that that someone's on top of you. And Bia's weighing her hips very nicely, you know, hooking those legs in, making sure her hips are nice and heavy. That just takes your air away. It's she's, just, she's anchoring very well, you know, her hips uh, are low, very heavy, as you said. Now she needs to put her chest up a little bit so she has more leverage to make more damage using the elbows and punching. That's it's gonna be an open, open uh, space for submissions. Tiago Moises, the submission specialist, has laid out the blueprint, lay a couple of punches and go for that submission. João Claudio Suarez saw that Furrow had her toes in the cage, immediately told her to take it out, 30 seconds left. Contoli after a very nice takedown, stretched Furrow out in a way that didn't even let her uh, stabilized to defend the takedown. Now she's been on top for about a minute. And she's starting to work from the top position now, showing how dominant she is. Is Foro doing the right thing, trying to keep her close? Foro on top now, 10 seconds left. She's trying to rain down those bombs, get that last second finish. And Foro trying to keep that distance close. Constantly doing everything she can the last couple seconds of this first round. That's a wrap for the first, Thiago. In your eyes, was it a clear victory for uh, Bia Consoli in this initial round? Yes, I, I think uh, it was a pretty close round uh, to, to, the, to the takedown. You know, when, uh, when Carol got the takedown, she got the mount, she did the damage at the end, especially at the end, you know. They, this stays in the judge's head, so I, I think Carol won this, this round. But it was it was really, really good round. Uh, Beatrice was moving a lot, as you said, sideways, really good footwork, really good calf kicks. And, uh, but Carol, uh, so sorry, uh, but Beatrice, she had the grappling advantage and then did more damage on the ground, so I think she won. Thiago Moises laying it out, very experienced UFC fighter, has another fight on March. And Bia Consoli was the most dominant fighter in this round, 
was on top, raining down bombs at the end of this first round. And like Tiago said, I mean, sometimes the eyes of the judges, what happens towards the end of the round is fresher in their minds and, you know, makes it easier to judge. Second round underway. Both ladies undefeated in their pro careers. We got five more minutes via Consoli red tape. Carol Foro blue tape. Second round of action. I'm Max Suarez by my side tonight. Tiago Moises, and if you think, oh my God, where is Ron Kruk? Ron Kruk will be here with you guys. The last three preliminary fights, and also the main car. Then Tiago and myself, we head over. We run across the cage, and we sit at the Brazilian broadcast booth, because we do it all. We did it all. Four minutes and 20 seconds left here in this second round. Good shot to the body there by Consoli. A lot of feints, a lot of hand movement, guard in the right place. You can see that Foro moves her head side to side very well. That's what Consoli needs to do, feint, 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 in and out. When uh, Carol tries to counter, go wonder for the takedown. What I see, what I've been observing is that Consoli is very good at, every time she closes that distance, she gets into that clinch, she's good at landing something always, almost immediately, or when she's on her way out, a knee, or a jab or an elbow, so she's not wasting all that energy that she took to close that distance. She's making sure that she's crossing something off, dotting an I or crossing a T when she gets in there. Yeah, like, she, as you said, uh, she's a very experienced fighter. You know, she's 20 and 0, but uh, 13 fights as an amateur. amateur. So... I mean, not even pros. There's some pros yeah. that don't even have 13 <laughs> fights in their career, 14 fights, so definitely a lot of experience. We say 2 and 0 as a pro, but th this is her 16th fight. If you that's add both of, of them, experience. that's a lot of experience. I Alec, mean, Alex Pereira doesn't doesn't have yeah, as much fights. Alex Pereira so. doesn't have as exactly. That's a Kiki, very good He has point. a lot of kicking yeah, boxes. Exactly. <laughs> just just for the to record, fair, Thiago yeah. said that not me, so he doesn't come after me wanting to <laughs> kick my butt. But three minutes left in the second round. Bia constantly closing in that distance. Nice knee to the body. They're back in the center of the LFA cage. We're in São Paulo, Cajamar, which has been our home in Brazil. For the past year or so, they have embraced the essence of Legacy Fighting Alliance and have given us the chance to make MMA grow in Brazil in a way that you, you've been seeing it. If you've been following us, 300 fighters to the UFC, um, 18 from Brazil. So Eight shows in Brazil, right? Exactly. So it's, it's a lot of shows, a lot of fighters being recognized after COVID, after not having so many opportunities in the country of Brazil. Nice overhand right there by Foro. Half the round left. Little jumpy jump there by Consoli, showing that she's comfortable. Good team to the body there by Foro. And Consoli acknowledged it. Nice single leg. Now if she runs the pipe, she's going to take uh, Carol down. And the thing about this guillotine, a lot of people, oh, it's, it may be tight. Sometimes this is just a defense mechanism to keep that person worried about that single leg. Right. I think that the guillotine doesn't work and uh, doesn't help you defend the takedown, so I wouldn't spend the energy on that neck. I mean, if anything, I don't know if you guys would agree with me, and you being a black belt like myself, Tiago, that actually helps out because it keeps you closer to the person. Right. What they need is, is yes. close. And, you know, she's there, but she flipped it around, yeah. and she's got that. <laughs> she did that just to make sure I was proved wrong yeah. on, on podcast. <laughs> I, I'm still your friend, Foro. We got one minute and 30 seconds left. Constantly trying to make her way back up. Foro being the stronger woman on top right now, and Consoli very good in standing up, creating that space on her feet once again, and the stronger woman on top right now. Consoli really good, uh, very good creating that scramble, you know. Uh, when she got the neck, she was going down, and she used that to, to throw uh, Foro uh, to the bottom. And Foro also really good, like skipping her hips, got the other hook, single leg, really good scramble. Final minute of round two, LFA 175. We're live from Cajamar, Brazil, via Consoli versus Carol Ford. Second fight of the night. You guys are with us here from the get-go as we kick off our Brazil tour for 2024. Looks like Bia spent a lot of energy in the first round, like trying to take downs. Yeah, you can see, you can tell by her body language. You know, she's caving in a little bit more, showing how she's a little bit more tired. And I, I agree with you, Tiago. Trying to take somebody down really gasses you out. It, it sucks the life out of you a lot of times because you're putting in so much effort for a takedown. 
Now Foro with that guillotine, trying to stretch that body out. Kind of a weird position there. Yeah, but weird. Uh, look. Last 10 seconds of the second round. Carol Foro trying to put everything she has into that guillotine. Bia Contoli has her ribs on the cage. Was able to defend it one more round. Bia Contoli definitely looking like she's very tired. She's got one minute to rest now. This was a closer round than the first one. I believe that Consley was in, was put in dangerous positions, but who do you think took this round, Thiago? Man, I think it was a very close round. This one, uh, Consley, she started to work on really good jabs, uh, but I think Carol Foro won this one. I think it's one and one. Um, Carol, she she looked at better, better body language, so I think she got this one. I think it's one on one. Okay, so Tiago Moises has it one apiece. We're ones here. The second fight of LFA 175. Again, this is not the official decision. The judges have it officially cage side if this fight goes three rounds. Some good moments there in the second. Constantly did get some body shots. I agree with Tiago. Foro did put Constantly in some danger. Um, and Constantly seemed tired in the beginning of the second. We'll see how she recovered uh, in this one minute rest that she had. Third and final round underway here in LFA 175. Now it's the time they, they need to leave it all inside the cage. You know, last five minutes. Via Consley immediately takes the center of the cage, lifting that Muay Thai style leg, trying to check that, that kick. Very good jabs. Job. Yeah, very good jab. Foro tried to counter with that overhand right, didn't really find anything. And Consley, I believe Thiago, trying to use her distance and her range a little bit more. Yes. I think Consley, if she keeps like just jabbing, jabbing, fainting, moving, I think she, she could win this round. Good left hook there by Foro. Tried that cheap teep kick again that caught Consley in the first round. And I got to say, Thiago, now that I said that, it reminded me of that teak, that body push kick that Foro threw that constantly caved in a little bit. That might have had some effect in her being so tired because shots to the body like that, they will take the life out. Yeah, that, that takes your energy away, you know, so. Good vision. Yes, yes. I mean, when you do this enough, you kind of know. I mean, yeah. you're a high level black belt. You, you must have seen that too. You're, everybody at home must have seen that. Constantly trying to recover and show her warrior spirit here tonight. She's still walking forward, even yes. though she's taking those kicks and punches to the body. Nice uppercut there by Carol Foro. Constantly in with that, that clinch. Nice Good lead. knee to the head by Foro. Constantly is down, immediately went for that leg. Foro was able to move around, still on the mission to grab that single leg. Constantly knows nice. that she has more advantage on the ground right now. And I mean, as being, being a jujitsu, Practitioners, we know that when you're on the ground, it's easier to control your gas. Even though you're tired, you can find places to rest. When you're standing, it's it's a 100% pedal to the metal. I mean, it's hard to find places to rest. I agree with you. Really high level takedown, high crotch to the double leg. Now she can rest, you know, use her, just her body weight, you know, to keep her opponent down, you know. She doesn't need to use her muscle and spend a lot of energy. Just uh, use her body weight and the, and the work, you know round the pond, make sure she's going to do enough damage to win the fight. And this proves what we said in the beginning. Um, this is, for Consoli, this is her toughest matchup yet in her career. That's including amateur and pro. This came out of her own mouth. And Foro is proving to be a very, very tough opponent. I mean, tough competition for Consoli. If she wins this fight, it's definitely a step up in her game as far as a pro fighter. You know, you need to go through moments like this sometimes to be able to grow. Foro is a very game opponent. Even that she is on, she's on bottom, she's made Consoli work a lot. She's like skipping her hips, trying to get up, working uh, elbows from the bottom. So Consoli is not, is not uh, resting, she's, she's working. A little over two minutes left in this last round, second fight of the night. We still have three for you guys in the early prelims and three more in the preliminary bouts and then six amazing fights in the main card. And it's also important to remind you guys that only on UFC Fight Pass for the main card, we'll have six fights and the main fight, which is for the light heavyweight title. Bruno Lopez, our champ, and Marcos Brigagao looking for that 
belt, take it home for himself. And Novo Uniao and Niterói, Rio de Janeiro, one minute and 30 seconds left. Bia Consoli still on top and controlling the actions here in Cajamar, Sao Paulo. You see how she's using uh, her forehead, pressing down uh, Ferrer's head. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure who is on the bottom, like being, being pressed. You can see Aduce Moyes there on your right side behind the cage. That's Consoli's um, Jiu Jitsu coach and also her head coach, high level black belt from Rio de Janeiro. 59 seconds left, Bia Consoli on top. This is exactly where she needed to be, Tiago, in this final round. Transitioning, really, great really, back transition. Really good uh, transition to the back. Now she, she almost has the body triangle. Really good control. She's trying to sneak that for our men. Fora was wise, but now she's on top again, trying to spread those hips. Bia Consoli, 30 seconds left, very efficient. Good, good ground game level. I mean, she transitioned from the mount to the to the back with her hooks in, immediately sneaking that forearm. Very dangerous position for Foro. Forearm is in for Consley. Last 10 seconds of the round have been announced. Almost end of the fight. Bia Consley on stop, raining down that right hand, looking for those elbows. That's a wrap for the second bout of the night. Now I go to my man, Tiago Moises. He had it one apiece up until now. Was that last flurry of um, Consoli enough to give her this fight? Man, that was uh, an amazing fight. Uh, really high level, high, high level grappling exchanges. She was on the mount and then she transitioned to the back, finished with the ground pound. That, that's not easy to do, especially when you are tired in the third round, all sweaty and bloody. So uh, really, really high level. High level grappling exchanges. I, gi I gave her a first round to first and third to Bia. I think she did enough to win. In the eyes of Tiago Moises, the BJJ specialist, Bia constantly gets this win. We'll have to wait on the official decision with our man Leonardo Lavati in, in a few seconds. Meanwhile, you look at the best moments of this third round. That's when Consley was able to transition beautifully from the mount to the back, both hooks in, already looking for that rear naked choke when she turned around, ended the, the fight on top, raining down that right hand, looking for some elbows, looking for some strong right hands. There's some motivational speech there for Carol Foro's corner. And Bia Consley alongside Ed Ducey Moyes. Great fight. I mean, it's, it's gonna go down to the judge's decision, but we know that when fights go down to the judges' decision, it doesn't necessarily mean it was a it was a boring fight to watch. I mean, our last fight we had a split decision, which means it was a very even matchup. Now we have a judges' decision again. This only proves that our matchmaker Mark Beery does a sensational job in putting these fights together. You know, night and day, thinking about where this promotion has gotten to, where it wants to be in the future. And I mean, when you see fights like this, only second fight of the night. Both ladies undefeated 2-0, and and we have such a, a professional display for these young ladies. But now let's head up to Leonardo Lavati for the official decision. After three rounds, we go to the judge score. Cards for decision. Judge one score 29-28, Pia. Judge two score 29-28, Caro. Judge three, score 29-28 in favor of the winner by a split decision, Bia Consuli. Well, it looks like we're not always on the same page as the judges. Second fight straight, that's going to split decision. That also shows the high level of tonight's matchup. This was the second fight of the night. Bia Consuli moves on to 3-0. Carol Foro takes her first loss of her pro career. That's a wrap. We'll be back in a couple seconds with our third fight in the welterweight division.
This is the next fight for you guys tonight. Welterweight bout. Gustavo Enrique versus Reginaldo Jr. Three five minute rounds in the welterweight bout. Fighters are in the cage. Let's head up to Leonardo Levati for the official presentation. This fight is scheduled for three five minute rounds in the welterweight LFA division. And it's brought to you by Avati. Introducing first the fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a striker. He stands five feet nine inches tall and weighs in at 117.2 pounds with nine wins, been four by submission and five by knockout. Representing the whole team and fighting out of Niteroi, Rio de Janeiro. Please welcome Gustavo King. Standing across the gates, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu style fighter. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, and weighs in at 171 pounds with seven wins, including two by knockout and four by submission. Representing the fighting nerds, Arena Extreme, and fighting out of Baja Funda São Paulo. Please welcome the The referee in charge of this bout is Julio Catarino. Julio Catarino is the man in charge of the actions here tonight. Walter Waite bout, Gustavo Enrique blue tape, Eginaldo Jr. red tape. Three five minute rounds. Now, Tiago, we're starting this off. I'm gonna let people know, you know Eginaldo Jr. well. He's been a training partner. Um, what can we say about it? I mean, he's, he's been with us for a couple of fights. Um, very tough kid. Very strong from the waist down also. He looks like two different guys, waist down and waist up. Man, he's a very strong guy, heavy grappler. His, his grappling is amazing. He has really good takedowns, very good top pressure. Uh, his striking is really good also. He's a very well-rounded fighter. I think she, he's going to look for to take this fight to the ground where he has more advantage. And, uh, oh, nice one, too. Nice. Very well said. Gustavo Enrique, though, on the other side, 8-2 in his career, is the more experienced man and also the taller man in this matchup. Strong hands. Reginaldo Jr. has had problems with guys that have heavy hands like Gustavo Enrique. So we're going to have to t pay close attention to the action. Welterweight uh, a division is a division that has got fast guys with heavy hands. You saw Enrique throw that leg kick like a lightning bolt. Nice! Good yes. right hand Whoa. by Hedgenaldo Jr. Whoa, that is a wrap! What a knockout by Hedgenaldo Jr. here in the first round. The right hand connected, showed everybody at home that he's not only a grappler, he has a heavy hand. The crowd goes wild. He's got a lot of fans, he's fighting at home. What a performance by Reginaldo Jr. Moves on to 8 and 1 in his pro career. We would love to take a closer look at that replay when our production is able to do that. What a performance. Man, what a, what a performance, man. Looks, looks like he has bundles on his hands, man. Was one, one punch KO. That was amazing. And uh, he, he, he's striking, uh, look at it really sharp tonight. Uh, he's jabbing, his distance, he was pressing. And, uh, and uh, against a taller opponent with more reach, he did amazing. He, he, look, he looks like a really, really, uh, really good performance. You see Kyle Bohali there in the cage with them, UFC fighter, also commentator tonight in the English broadcast later on in this fight card. The crowd is going crazy, I can barely hear myself. Let's take a look at that replay, that right hand that connected right on the money. Took Gustavo Enrique down, he's out cold. Reginaldo Jr. with the walk-off knockout here at LFA 175. Bang right on the button. Money shot there for Reginaldo Jr. Great way to have a win in your hometown, Tiago. This is the kind of win that you dream of when yes. you fight. Man, imagine this KO, the, the crowd, they are going crazy, so he's not gonna be able to sleep tonight. There you see his girlfriend with Reginaldo Jr. on her shirt, that same man that you see standing next to Fabio Catarino. We will have the official decision for you. First fight that doesn't go the distance, and what a fight. 
This just shows you guys what we have in store for you tonight. And we do have the girlfriend yelling. Leo Lavati, take it away, my man. Referee Julio Catarino has called a stop to this contest at one minute and third or three seconds of round number one. The Clarion, the winner by KO Heji Naldo Julio. Getting his eighth career win. That's a wrap for this fight. We have two more fights on this early prelim stream. We'll see you in a couple of seconds. We have one, we have one more women's
draw weight fight for you guys. Fourth of the night here in the early prelims. Gabby Fujimoto versus Sabrina Oliveira. And for the official announcement, Leonardo Levi. This fight is scheduled for three five minute rounds in the LFA's throwaway division. And it's brought to you by Prime. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter is a striker. She stands 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighs in at 114.4 pounds with five wins being won by knockout and one by submission representing City Demetrio and fighting out of Hoyapoki Amapa. She is Sabrina Demetrio. And stealing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This fighter is a grappler. She stands five feet three inches tall and weighs in at 116 pounds with three wins being won by knockout and one by submission. Representing KO Squad and fighting out of Rio de Janeiro. Please welcome Gabi Fujimoto. And the referee in charge of this bout is Fernando Portela. Fernando Portela once again here in the center of the LFA cage will be the man in control of the action. Sabrina Oliveira, red, blue tape. Gabriela Fujimoto, blue tape, undefeated. 3-0 in her career, never lost. Sabrina Oliveira, the more experienced fighter in the blue tape, doing her ninth pro fight tonight. Gabby Fujimoto has proved in previous editions, Tiago, to be very a very good, well-rounded MMA fighter. But she always likes to end up on the ground, close the distance, and Sabrina Oliveira is the taller fighter. This is probably the tallest fighter Fujimoto has faced. What would be the strategy here? Uh, I think the cage control is going to be key again, you know. Uh, so this striker uh, wants to control the cage, ma make the grappler walk backwards beyond the on the back foot. Because if the grapplers can uh, walk you down and uh, walk forward, it's gonna be your 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 back is gonna be against the fence, and the take that's gonna be there, you know. Take down by Gabriella Fujimoto, doing exactly what she likes to do: take her opponents down, grind them with their back on the ground, make sure that she's always on heavy dominant positions, as you see there. Top position for Gabriella Fujimoto. She's got a little over three minutes and 50 seconds left to work from this position. She has the body lock, very good uh, position to pass. She's very heavy on top. She's, she's using her head very well also in the throw, putting pressure. And also, I mean, that's when you've got your back on the mat like that and your neck's crooked, it's a very uncomfortable position to be in. We can see Sabrina Oliveira kind of showing that with her facial expressions. It's not, it's not comfortable at all. Gabby Fujimoto is doing a good job and almost like a bow and arrow, you know, like an arrow just arrowing down on her with her weight, controlling her feet. And now working the ground and pound, it looks like the, what happens a lot of times, the bottom fighter is trying to get up, uh, gives, gives the back, so uh, Fujimoto needs to be ready to make that, get that opportunity and get the back. She got that right knee into that guard, still got that knee shield there for Oliveira. Almost halfway through the first, trying to work those elbows from the bottom, being very smart. Nice elbows there from Oliveira. Tried to make it up top. Fujimoto was quicker. Now back on top for some, some more control. You can see that hook with her left leg that Oliveira is trying to put in. I mean, how effective is that if there is any efficiency? That's very effective because when you are on top, you want to put uh, pressure on your, on your opponent's head. And uh, when she put, uh, when she uses that hook, she can stretch you, so she takes pressure off the, the off of the head. Wise words by my man Tiago Moises, former RFA champ, has one of the most incredible helicopter armbar submissions in the history of MMA. As Oliveira keeps push kicking upwards there towards Fujimoto, that's taking those quick those kicks. Two minutes left, trying to throw her own now. You can see that Fujimoto's moving forward with her head back, making sure she doesn't get hit with those uh, those up kicks. She's a very smart fighter. Again, very impressive for a 3-0 and just 20 years old. 
Very well said, Tiago. That's an important point. Only 20 years old, 3-0 in her professional MMA career, fighting out of KO squad. She's got training partners like the last two ladies you guys have seen fight her, Bia Conti, Aiza Bertoso. They're, they all train together. They all grow together. Nice elbows there by Oliveira. Fujimoto could have taken too long. I mean, those elbows look like knives. You can't be taking elbows like that. Maybe a triangle submission there for Oliveira didn't come through. Fujimoto's managing to push through it. But Oliveira being smart off her back and throwing those elbows. Fujimoto's doing a really good job, like, uh, pushing her real, you know. She, she wants to uh, hurt Oliveira, and uh, she, she has bad intentions. We, we can see that. Very aggressive fighter, and uh, I'm very impressive. You know, there's no better way to explain what she was doing. Bad intentions, bad Thiago. Intentions. Perfectly said. Oliveira is having those bad intentions, trying to use the little space that the she elbows. has off her back, the elbows, trying to cut and make Fujimoto worry about those elbows instead of actually dominating the position and stabilizing the position. So perfectly said, last 30 seconds of this initial round. That's a hard business. Hard business. <laughs> it's a hard day at work when that happens, trust yeah. me. <laughs> Final 20 seconds, Fujimoto managing to stay on top, dominant position, but Oliveira has shown that those elbows are sharp and that she manages to sneak them in with space that I don't even know how she does it. Last 10 seconds of this initial round. Straw weight division. Ladies once again inside the LFA cage. Looking for that heel hook there. Gabby Fujimoto, end of the first. That was really tight. That was tight. That must hurt. And uh, again, really good job by the matchmaker, Mark. Really, he's doing a really good job of finding those talents. And also, like, Going back to what you said about bad intentions, I mean, it almost looked like that was a bad intention there for Gabi Fujimoto, knowing she didn't have time, but maybe imposing a little bit of pain to get to the, um, Oliveira, just so that she was have, would have that in her, the back of her mind when she walked out for that one minute rest. She wants to impose her will, she wants to uh, break uh, her opponent's spirit, that's that's what uh, she wants to do, you know? And uh, I think I think she she's doing that. Gabby Fujimoto, and there's that heel hook that she attempted at the end of this first round. Very, very effective. And look at Luana Santos, former LFA great, now in the big shows, fighting out of the UFC, living in California, been in Sao Paulo for the last couple of days, visiting family, and she's, she's here. She's making herself present here at Legacy Fighting Alliance. Second round. Fujimoto in the red tape, Oliveira in the blue tape. Five more minutes of action. Fujimoto undefeated, 3-0 in her career. All three of her fights inside the Legacy Fighting Alliance cage here in Brazil. Sabrina Oliveira, the more experienced fighter. Ninth fight tonight, good high kick with her left leg there by Oliveira. Good counter there by Fujimoto, showed how quick she is. Immediately throws, shoots in for that oh. single leg, but Sabrina has that rear naked choke kind of on the side you know those fighters with long arms always scare me when they sink in that her naked choke i mean the arms definitely yeah. help <laughs> that's very dangerous uh, um this reminded me charles oh that was a very nice trip good takedown there by fujimoto but as you were saying tiago reminds you a lot of, of charles, charles Oliveira. Yeah. he that will probably be uh in attendance tonight here uh, in the LFA, he's got a couple of uh, training partners that are fighting, and he normally comes. He, he's very humble, likes to be with his training partners, make sure he's, they know that they have his support. On top, Fujimoto. Good half guard control. Tried to move her hips away there, Oliveira, but th there are those elbows that caused some problems to Fujimoto in the first, and they seem to be causing problems again. Elbow to the thigh there by Fujimoto. Oliveira is doing a very good job with the elbows from the bottom, so she doesn't let Fujimoto be comfortable and think of what, what she's gonna do next. You know, she she always make her think about the elbows, and uh, that's good because she, she doesn't take in more damage. Fernando Portela there, making sure Oliveira knows that she was striking the back of the head, always on top. I mean, I, Cab MMA, best in the business here in Brazil. They do the UFCs, they do the LFA. We follow. Only the best, only the best work with us. So hats off to CAB MMA, the Brazilian Athletic Commission, 
Gabby Fujimoto, top control once again. Two minutes and 50 seconds left here in the second. Now Oliveira needs to put uh, her her feet on the hip and and push and try to get up. You know she she's not she lost one round been on her back and she's gonna lost on, another one if she stays on bottom. And like you said, feet on the hips, push off. That's why cage ha having the person with their head on the cage is so efficient yes. because they don't have that space to push right. off. They have to squirm or veer sideways to make sure they're adjusting their body to move. But Fujimoto, as you can see. Good underhooks, good wide knee base on her toes, making sure she's got the pressure, making it hard for Oliveira to make her way back up. And even though she's not striking like we've said in previous fights tonight, that still counts as, as control. And yes. top control is one of the deciding factors inside of MMA. Yeah, she's very, very heavy on top, I like hitting with the elbow and uh, shoulder. She has the underhook. She's got that butterfly guard in. And at the same time that it's keeping Gabby from, from, from passing guard, you can see she's finally got that foot on the hip that you were yes. talking about, Tiago. I mean, BJJ's Tiago Moises called the shot. Put your foot on the hip, create the space to get up. But Fujimoto also noticed that, and she's trying to come closer and weighing right, using that head control on, on uh, Oliveira's chin. Very, very important as yes, well. Yes, very important, yeah. And uh, Oliveira, she's not uh, giving her back to get up. That's that's smart also because she knows if she, she turns her back, Fujimoto is gonna is gonna capitalize on that. A couple oh, more. nice leg lock attempt. No leg lock attempt there. She can that to get up. Yep, she's trying to get up, and Fujimoto is the quicker fighter, like a cat, is on her feet once again. Quick turnaround, remaining in the top position, 50 seconds to the end of the second. Basically, what Fujimoto has been doing in the first top control. Full guard, butterfly guard, she's in it, she stands up, she's keeping that action going with the leg kicks. 40 seconds now for Fujimoto to remain that action going. Oliveira maybe trying to get on her feet is the best option for her. You can see the back of the cage right there, my man Joe Miglio on the screen. This guy, he's our angel here on the broadcast booth. Sponsor for making sure we look and sound good. 17 seconds left in the, to the end of the second round. Fujimoto on top once again. Good control, pulling the back of the head, making it uncomfortable, Oliveira. You heard that 10 second bell. The doors are about to open. Gabby Fujimoto trying to connect a couple more punches. And to the second, Fujimoto, Oliveira, Tiago Moises. Easy to say that this was a second round for Gabby Fujimoto as well. I think that was a clear round for Fujimoto. Uh, she took down, uh, she took Gabriela down. Oh, she took Oliveira down uh, right in the beginning of the round, and she dominated. Uh, heavy pressure, good ground and pound at the at the end. So, two and all my scorecards. Tiago Moisés having this fight, two and zero oh for Gabriela Fujimoto. You can see in the replay had that top action. Good control, was able to keep Oliveira from getting back on her feet. One second rest and reset for both fighters as we head into our third and final round. There, Mel Costa standing up, also LFA alumni that is one of the good ones in the UFC nowadays from, from the north of Brazil. And there, you can see upper left eye of Gabby Fujimoto you have some damage due yeah. to those elbows that Oliveira has been throwing very well. And Tiago, maybe that's something that Oliveira should explore a little bit more. Fujimoto red tape, Oliveira blue tape. Last round. Fights have been going three rounds. I mean, not counting the last one. That was a very quick knockout. Yeah. Oliveira needs to in and out, in and out fainting, uh, work the straight punches and uh, keep, keep uh, Fujimoto away, you know, um, avoid the grappling exchanges. The crowd's chanting out Gabby Fujimoto's name. She is a local, not from Cajamar, but from Sao Paulo, currently living and training in Rio de Janeiro, right next door. I'd compare it to Las Vegas in California, uh, Nevada and California, very close, a couple of hours drive. So 
Sao Paulo native living and training in Rio de Janeiro out of KO squad, Master Edu Moyes, which is her corner tonight. Training partner of the two that you've seen before, Beatrice Consoli and Ayesa Bertozzo, getting their hands raised. Fujimoto trying to get on that same boat and get her hand raised as well. Also going the distance here, three minutes and 53 seconds. Nice high kick by Fujimoto. Oliveira closes the distance. Now we're gonna see what Oliveira has to offer in this position, because she's been on the other side of the spectrum up until now. She's the offense now, uh, using her grappling to try to take the fight to the ground. And if she's get, she gets on, on top, I think it's gonna be a different uh, story than the other two rounds, but I don't think this is the smartest strategy, you know, because she lost two rounds in the grappling department, you know, now she has the back against the fence again, so she, she, she should have kept, kept the fight on standing. Yeah, impressive how Fujimoto turned things around, uh, being the smaller fighter. Um, this just shows how strong she is. Being the smaller fighter, being able to turn it around. Oliveira turns tables once again, now in charge of the actions, three minutes left. Just to remind you guys, after this fight, we still have one more for the early prelims. I'll be here with Thiago Moises, then the last three prelims. Ron Kruk will be in charge of the English broadcast alongside UFC great Kyle Bohalu. And then main card, six great fights for you guys. Light heavyweight title on the line. Bruno Lopez for the first time in Legacy Fighting Alliance history defends the title. Both fighters coming from contender series performances. Trying to sink in that guillotine choke. Good defense by Fujimoto. Yeah, keeping that head high, yeah, head right? High, yeah. Very good. Keeping that body lock tight. Look at the trip again. Leg that trip. trip. And she's got the controls. Oh. Down goes Oliveira. Fujimoto on top once again. Kind of like a broken record, Tiago. We've seen this first and second round. Fujimoto on top. Definitely showing that she's got the ground control and the ground technique necessary to keep that fight there, which is probably what she wants at this point. Really good top pressure, you know. Uh, she, she got a fight uh, to the ground again on top. She's uh, going to the safe, safe, safe way, you know, being on top, doing, the, doing damage, half guard, there's no danger. So she's, she's, she's a very smart fighter. Now trying to get to pass that guard there. For, get, for Fujimoto, got back to that butterfly guard. Something that Oliveira seems to do well, having those long legs. Butterfly is good to kind of push your opponent away, be able to create that space, hand on the mat, get back up. Um, now into full closed guard, now using those little hooks that you've talked about, which alleviates the pressure on uh, uh, Fujimoto's hips. Yeah. But now Fujimoto, she's, uh, she's pushing Oliveira to the fence again. She wants uh, Oliveira's head on the fence so, so she can like, Smash her on the on the fence. Final minute here in Cajamar, Sao Paulo, LFA 175. Fujimoto on her feet, red tape. Oliveira back on the mat, head close to the cage, blue tape, trying to stay active. Fernando Portella has his eye on everything. Fujimoto, like a lightning bolt, is back into that guard. Seems like we're playing the same movie again, Tiago. And Fujimoto, like, use it like heavy grappling in the first, heavy grappling in the second. And uh, she is very well prepared uh, for this fight because she's not even breathing heavy, you know? She's, she's finishing strong and she spent a lot of energy. That's, that's very impressive. Gabby Fujimoto, which was, has basically grown inside of LFA. This is her fourth pro fight. All fights inside the Legacy Fighting Alliance cage. 10 seconds to the end of this bout. Sabrina Oliveira tries to keep some action going, throwing those kicks, has her back on the mat. Fernanda Portella. Ends the action here. Third round, end of the fight. Tiago Moises. What can we say about this fight? Is it an easy win for Gabby Fujimoto? Maybe a 30-27? What, what would you call it? I think this one was, was, a easy, was the easiest fight to judge uh, till now. You know, I think uh, Gabriela Fujimoto won all three rounds uh, clearly. And uh, she, she has a bright future. Just 20 years old, like, she's going to move to 4 and 0 now. And, uh, She's gonna be in the big shows for sure soon. Tiago Moises trying to predict the future here. And I, you know what, I'll go, I'll be on that same boat with him. Gabby Fujimoto has been building her career very wisely. 
Of course, we have to wait for the official judge's decision, but up till now, we believe she will get the win, but it won't be official until we have our man Leonardo up there to let us know. Gabby Fujimoto alongside her corner there, and Master BJJ head coach at Deuce Moyes, high level black belt, Sabrina Oliveira, taking that breath there after three long rounds and that fair play in between teams. LFA 175, live from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm Max Suarez, sitting by my side tonight. RFA champ, LFA great, Tiago Moises. We're doing the English broadcast right now. First five early prelims. Then we hop over across the cage. We, we flip the switch, and we go from English to Portuguese. Give our brains a little twist, but we'll make <laughs> it happen. Now let's head up to my man, all suited up in the cage, Leonardo Levati for the official decision. The Jets score this contest 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27. All in favor of the winner by unanimous decision, Gabriela Fujimoto! decision win here tonight. Third fight that goes to decision. We have one more fight here on the early prelims than the last three preliminary fights with Ron Kruk and Kyle Bohalyu. That's a wrap for this fight. Next fight will be the big boys in the cage. I'll see you guys in a couple seconds. here with the heavyweights in action. Arthur Fonseca versus Talison Teixeira, undefeated at 4-0. Oh. 
Good way to close out these early prelims. Big boys in the LFA cage. After that, we have three more preliminary fights with my man Ron Kruk and Kyle Bohalu that you guys watch exclusively on YouTube. Let's head up to my man Leonardo Levati. Take it away, brother. This fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the LFA Heavyweight Division, and it's brought to you by Fuel. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter is a grappler. He stands six feet one inch tall and weighs in at 263 pounds with three wins, two by knockout and one by submission. Representing LOJJ, fighting out of Macaé, Rio de Janeiro. Please welcome Arthur Mamuti Fonseca. Stealing across the gate, fighting out of the red corner. This fighter is a jiu-jitsu style fighter. He stands six feet, eight inches tall and weighs in at 261.4 pounds. With four wins, three by knockout and one by submission. Representing Team Lucas Mineiro and Team Lino Barros, fighting out of Sao Paulo. Please welcome Taliso Chico de Sheda. And the referee in charge of this bout is João Claudio Soares. João Claudio Soares will be in charge of this last fight of the early prelims. No, you guys did not hear it wrong. This man that was on your screen stands at six foot eight. His opponent, Fonseca, six foot one. We got a seven inch height difference there. To share a red tape, Fonseca blue tape. Big boys in action, heavyweight. Three five-minute rounds, good jab there by Fonseca. And like we say here in Brazil, Tiago, when heavyweights hit, hair doesn't grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where he hits, hair won't grow anymore. That's how heavy that's, these guys' that, hands that, are. That's right. Don't blink in this one. Yeah, this fight can have can end at any moment. Just one punch, and this could be over. Very tall, Teixeira, six foot eight. Good oh. leg kick to the body. Fonseca closes the diff the distance. BJJ Blackbolt, as you can see, tattooed on his rib cage. Teixeira trying to go for that spin, get his back on the cage. Very heavy Fonseca. Goes to the back, moves well for a big man. Good transition there by the big boy Fonseca, trying to elbow back, caught the back of the head there. Jean Claude Soares was on top of his game, already alerted him. Foot stomps a la Marco Huas. Trying to keep the distance, but you can see the difference in height there when he's yes. closing into that. And cage Fons pressure. Fonseca is the shorter fighter. He, he's doing the the right strategy here, you know, closing the distance and using the grappling. Now he can he he can use uh, his uh, his legs to do the trips, you know, go to the back. Great but he's feet. doing a good job keeping the pressure and the, the taller, getting the tall guy, the big big man tired. Exactly. Like Tiago said, the short man always has to close the difference. That's kind of like in the Bible of MMA. Um, you got to get your reach in. You got to close the distance to be able to get your shots. Fonseca is doing exactly that. He knows that staying on the cage is avoiding a lot of damage. If he goes to the center of the cage, he, he has a disadvantage. Shorter arms, shorter in height. And on the, on the flip side, Teixeira has to make sure that he gets out. This is not a good game for him. Yeah, Teixeira is doing a good job defending. You know, he can he can put uh, Fonseca's head down and uh, put the hands on the butt also, you know, and put uh, the, the pressure on the head. João Claudio Suarez splits things up. Action is in the middle of the cage now, halfway through this initial round. Teixeira red tape, Fonseca blue tape. Heavyweight bout. Last fight of the early prelims. We have three more oh. prelims for you guys, also on YouTube with my man Ron Kruk and Kyle Bohalu. Thiago Moises and I flip the switch and go to the Portuguese broadcast and keep the action going. Teixeira moves really well for, for a big guy. That was a, a really nice spinning back kick. Yeah, I mean, you don't see a lot of heavyweights throwing spinning back kicks, but Teixeira said he's, he's here tonight to prove a point. It's not because he's big and standing at six foot eight that he can't make things happen and do fancy, fancy right. fakes and feints and, and spinning. And he's doing that. Still got one minute and 50 seconds left. 
We know that heavyweights are normally a faster pace until we get a knockout out of nowhere. But I feel that there's a lot more studying, though. Yeah. Teixeira needs to, yes, he needs to use the, his straight, straight punchers more, more feints. And use, use more his reach. Yes, that's it. Good right hand by Teixeira Fonseca's down immediately clips onto that leg. That's a wrap. Art Jallison Teixeira, send me the money. Sign that contract, ladies and gentlemen. The six foot eight heavyweight connects that heavy right hand and takes the win back to Team Teixeira. Like we were talking about it, Tiago. <laughs> they can happen punches. any minute. And uh, yeah, that, that's what he did. You know, he connected one and two, and the guy, the guy felt his hand, and then he finished with a nasty ground and power. That that's the time that uh, I say, thanks God, I'm light, I'm lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I say, thank God, I'm not fighting anymore. I'm just <laughs> calling fights and not getting punched in the face. Teixeira proves that he is a man to keep your eye on, proving to five and zero, oh, and the red corner tonight is on a roll, Tiago. All five fights in the early prelims have been won by fighters in the red corner. This might be something to watch out. There's that right hand, followed by that cross that just zoomed by Fonseca's face. Teixeira ended it on the ground. João Claudio Suarez saw enough, got in the way, called the fight. Look at that heavy right hand. And he man. did the right thing. He's yeah, the, he he's the, the right. longer yeah. man, the ones and twos down the middle, the ones that are going to get there faster and, and easier. Yeah, he, he was very smart, you know, and uh, keeping the distance, uh, working on the straight punches. And man, as you said, when the heavy, where the heavyweight hits, the hair doesn't grow anymore. Nope. Uh, yeah, I mean, Fonseca doesn't have a lot of hair going on there, <laughs> but if he did, hair wasn't going to grow wherever Teixeira hit. We have the two mans lined up. 6-8 in height. Talison Teixeira keeps his record intact has never felt the sour taste of defeat. Jean Claude Suarez with an amazing call, very experienced ref from Cab MMA. And Teixeira takes that win back to Team Lucas Monero in Sao Paulo, but let's head up to Leonardo Levati for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Jean Claude Suarez has called a stop to this contest at three minutes and 31 seconds of round number one, declaring the winner by TKO Talisong Chico de Teixeira. Teixeira with his fifth career pro win, keeps his record perfect, still has that O on the side. That's a wrap for the early prelims. I'm Max Flores alongside Tiago Moises. It was great being with you guys here on YouTube. Broadcast will continue. Three more fights on YouTube. You'll be with Ron Kruk and Kyle Bohalio. Then main card only on UFC Fight Pass. We'll see you guys soon, and thank you for being with us.